Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and we have a fantastic historical pistol to take a look at today. This is the one millionth Browning pistol made by FN. It's actually the one millionth pistol made by FN, and there is a fantastic story behind it. So let me tell you that story, but let me uh, bring the camera up close so you can take a look at this cool thing while I'm telling you. So of course, FN was founded originally to manufacture uh, Belgian Mauser rifles for the Belgian military. After they completed that contract, the, the company was really sort of at a loss for work, and it was their, um, their meeting up with um, and their collaboration with John Browning that really sustained FN for many years from the early 1900s through World War I. So John Browning really was the lifeblood of this company with a series of pistol designs, starting with the Model 1899 and then Model 1900, and then the 1905 or 1906 vest pocket guns, and then the 1910s, and on and on. So uh, FN realized that they were like it, it occurred to them, someone, that they had manufactured a literally a million FN Browning pistols at some point in 1912. Um, they know the exact date, although I don't have it in front of me. So what they did, they pulled, they kept found and pulled the millionth pistol manufactured off the line and specially gold engraved it, one million there. Interestingly, it has no serial numbers on the places where a regular FN model, uh, model 1900 would be marked. And what they wanted to do was present this gun to John Moses Browning at a giant, basically a giant party, uh, celebrating the fact that they had produced a million of his pistols. Now this is 1912 when they actually make it, it will take them two years to actually organize this party. We have here a copy of a newspaper announcing, and this is from February, uh, February 2nd, 1914, announcing the Grand Fête, the, the big party at FN. They invited all sorts of important people, uh, major Browning sales agents, John Browning himself and his son Val were both there. They invited the King of Belgium, who didn't come, but uh, several of the, the Belgian government ministers came. This was a, a huge event. It was a giant banquet for 500 people. And they presented at that banquet this pistol to John Browning himself. They also made up a number of Browning vest pocket 1905s or 1906s that were marked en milliard, uh, or en million, uh, one million written out, uh, that were presented to people like Val Browning and some of the other important people who weren't actually John Browning. Well, <laughs> what they didn't really pay attention to or didn't really care about necessarily is that John Moses Browning was not particularly interested in commemorative pistols. To him, this wasn't really something he had all that much care for. And so by the time this party happens in February of 1914, uh, tensions in Europe are getting pretty high, and Browning does attend this, this banquet, but then fairly quickly heads back to the United States. And he doesn't even bother to take the pistol with him. Instead, he gives it to, of all people, his notary. Uh, in in Belgium. Um, and this man took possession of the gun and managed to keep it for like four decades. It, it successfully survived World War I, it was hidden from the Germans, um, it was kept through the interwar period, it was hidden from the Germans again during the Second World War, and eventually uh, the notary dies, it's inherited by his widow, and right after World War II, the Belgian government, uh, while well, they're concerned about communist activity, political unrest in Belgium in the aftermath of the war, and so they pass a piece of legislation. They require essentially everyone who has a gun to register themselves with the police. They want to know where the pistols are. And so in 1945, the widow of this original notary registers the pistol. We have our date right down here. Um, she registers it with her local police department, and so that gives us a pretty darn solid paper trail for this gun, at least back that far. That's a time period when something like this would not have been faked. To go one step beyond that, this is actually, these are photocopies obviously, but this is the, the cover and the, the title page of the registry book from the widow's actual uh, precinct. And this is the registry itself, where on that same date, 
This pistol, serial number 1 million, is being registered to her. The exact reason that Browning chose this particular person to give the pistol to is um, unknown. Uh, there's no way of ever knowing. Although it is worth pointing out that he lived in Bruges, and there was a major ammunition plant in Bruges, and so maybe there was some connection uh, there. But like I said, we don't actually know. Now the pistol continued to exist in uh, Belgian police registries. This is the registry from the early, uh, well, from the 1980s when Belgium went to its first digital computerized registry. Funny to note that they have identified it as a revolver. Uh, that registry was never particularly uh, practical, particularly successful or useful, and well, that's part of why. Now that brings us up to the most recent episode in this pistol's history, and that was in 2006 when Belgian gun laws changed uh, rather quickly. And among other things, what they changed was you could no longer be sort of a passive gun owner. You had to be a specific type of gun owner. You had to be a collector, a sport shooter, or a hunter. And if you weren't one of those three categories, and if you didn't have the, get the specific permit for one of those three categories, you couldn't just simply own a firearm, um, even if it had been registered. And so a lot of firearms were turned into the police. And this was one of them. This actually showed up at a police amnesty turn-in where all the guns were to be destroyed. And fortunately, uh, the officer who was administering the program where this was turned in recognized that, hey, the gold one million engraving might actually be something significant. And he called up uh, some folks uh, who were involved in Belgian firearms collecting and uh, the Belgian police and, and was able to save this pistol from being destroyed um, and, and keep it. And so that is why it continues to exist today. It was, in, it was consequently um, properly re-registered and is now in the possession of a Belgian gun collector. So extremely cool that, that something like this actually survives um, all the way from presumably John Browning's hands uh, through to uh, collectors today. For what it's worth, um, it also came with this disassembly key used for the grip screws and the breech block screws. So kind of a, a neat tool there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. This is a fantastic piece to have a chance to take a look at, and it's amazing the story that it went through and just the fact that it survived. So uh, a big thanks to Paco from the Foul Files for giving me access to this pistol from his collection uh, to be able to show to you guys. Thanks for watching.